Hello everyone. Welcome to Shark to 50 Technical Training. In this video, we will look at the installation and wiring of Shark 250 meter. So, let's get started. We will begin with mechanical installation. The Shark 250 meter can be installed using a standard NCC 39.1 for inches round or an IEC 96 mm DIN square form. In new installations, simply use existing DIN or NC punches. For existing panels, pull out old analog meters and replace them with the Shark 250 meter. We'll look at the Shark 250T transducer installation later in this video. In the sketch shown here, you'll see the meter front and side dimensions in inches and centimeters shown in brackets. The tolerance is plus minus 0.1 inch or 0.25 centimeters. Similarly, the next image shows the shark to 50T dimensions and meter back dimensions. Another image shows the NC and DI and cutout dimensions. Now, let's look at the recommended tools for shark to 50 meter installation, which are number two Phillips screwdriver. Small adjustable wrench. The Shark 250 meter is designed to operate in industrial, utility, and C and I environment. Next, we look at the NC installation steps. First one is slide meter with mounting gasket into panel. Then secure from back of panel with flat washer, lock washer, and nut on each threaded rod. Use a small wrench to tighten. Do not over tighten. The maximum installation torque is 0.4 Newton meter. After this, we have the end installation steps. The first step is slide meter with any M812 mounting gasket into panel, remove NC studs if in place. Then, from back of panel, slide to Dan mounting brackets into grooves in top and bottom of meter housing. Snap into place. Lastly, secure meter 2 panel by using a 2 Phillips screwdriver to tighten the screw on each of the two mounting brackets. Do not over tighten. The maximum installation torque is 0.4 Nm. Moving on to the next one, we have the transducer installation. Here, use the rail mounting to install the Shark 250T transducer. The specifications for the end rail mounting are international standards DN46 to 77/3. The end rail slotted dimensions 0.297244 inches by 1.377953 inches by 3 inches or 0.755 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters by 7.62 centimeters. Now, slide top groove of meter onto the end rail. Then Press gently until the meter clicks into place. Please note that, to remove the meter from the DAN rail, pull down on the release clip to detach the unit from the rail as shown in the diagram here. If mounting with the DAN rail provided, use the black rubber stoppers, which are also provided as shown in this diagram here. Also, regarding the DAN rails, it must be noted that, DN rails are commonly used as a mounting channel for most terminal blocks, control devices, circuit protection devices, and PLCs. DN rails are made of electrolytically plated cold rolled steel and are also available in aluminum, PVC, stainless steel, and copper. So, this covers pretty much everything in the mechanical installation. Now, the next section to look at is the electrical installation. When installing meters, there are a few considerations, which we need to see. Installation of the Shark 250 meter must be performed only by qualified personnel who follow standard safety precautions during all procedures. Those personnel should have appropriate training and experience with high voltage devices. Appropriate safety gloves, safety glasses, and protective clothing is recommended. During normal operation of the Shark 250 meter, dangerous voltages are present through many parts of the meter, 
including terminals and any connected CDs or current transformers, and PDs or potential transformers, all I.O. or inputs and outputs modules and their circuits. All primary and secondary circuits can, at times, produce lethal voltages and currents. Avoid contact with any current carrying surfaces. Do not use the meter or any I.O. output device for primary protection or in an energy limiting capacity. The meter can only be used as secondary protection. Do not use the meter for applications where failure of the meter may cause harm or death. Do not use the meter for any application where there may be a risk of fire. All meter terminals should be inaccessible after installation. Do not apply more than the maximum voltage the meter or any attached device can withstand. Refer to meter and or device labels and to the specifications for all devices before applying voltages. Do not HIPOD dielectric test any outputs, inputs or communications terminals. EIG requires the use of fuses for voltage leads and power supply and shorting blocks to prevent hazardous voltage conditions or damage to CDs if the meter needs to be removed from service. CT grounding is optional but recommended. Note that the current inputs are only to be connected to external current transformers provided by the installer. The CTs shall be approved or certified and rated for the current of the meter used. A few important things are also required to be taken into consideration. If the equipment is used in a manner not specified by the manufacturer, the protection provided by the equipment may be impaired. There is no required preventive maintenance or inspection necessary safety. However, any repair or maintenance should be performed by the factory. Now, let's talk about the disconnect device, which is an important part to be considered here. A switch or circuit breaker shall be included in the end use equipment or building installation. This switch shall be in close proximity to the equipment and within easy reach of the operator. This switch shall be marked as the disconnecting device for the equipment. Next, we move to the CT leads terminated to meter. If you look at image here, it shows the most typical connection where CT leads are terminated to the meter at the current gills. This connection uses nickel-plated brass studs or current gills with screws at each end. This connection allows the CD wires to be terminated using either NO or a U-log. Tighten the screws with a number 2 Phillips screwdriver. The maximum installation torque is 1 newton meter. We will look at other current connections along with voltage and RS485 KYZ connections and wiring diagrams later in this video. After this, we move to the next section, which is CT leads pass through no meter termination. This method allows the CD wires to pass through the CD inputs without terminating at the meter. In this case, remove the current gills and place the CD wire directly through the CD opening. The opening accommodates up to 0.177 inches or 4.5 millimeters maximum diameter CD wire. Next, we have the quick connect crimp on terminations. For quick termination or for portable applications, 0.25 inches quick connect crimp on connectors can also be used. Then, we move on to the voltage and power supply connections. Voltage inputs are connected to the back of the unit via optional wire connectors. The connectors accommodate AWG hash 1226 or 3.310.129 square millimeters. Next is the ground connections. The meter's ground terminals should be connected directly to the installation's protective earth ground. Use a WG hashed 120.32 square millimeter wire for this connection. Now, talking about the voltage fuses, EIG requires the use of fuses on each of the sense voltages and on the control power. Use a 0.1 ampere fuse on each voltage input. 
use a 3 ampere slow blow fuse on the power supply. EIG offers the EICP panel meter protective fuse kit, which can be ordered from IDE's web store. Select fuse kits from the list on the left side of the webpage. The next section we'll cover is the electrical connection diagrams for Shark 250 meters. Choose the diagram that best suits your application. Be sure to maintain the CD polarity when wiring. The first one is Y delta, 4 wire with no PDs, 3 CDs. The diagram clearly shows the three phase, 4 wire system Y delta with direct voltage, and 3 element. When using this wiring, select 3 ELY, that is, 3 element Y from the shark meter's front panel display. For the same Y delta, 4 wire with no PDs, 3 CDs connection, an example of dual phase hookup is also shown here. In this case also, select 3 ELY from the shark meter's front panel display. Similarly, we have an example of single phase hookup shown in the diagram. Now, the next diagram shows the 2.5 element Y, 4 wire with no PDs, 3 CDs. This is a 3 phase, 4 wire system Y with direct voltage, and 2.5 element. When using this wiring, select 2.5 ELY from the shark meter's front panel display. Next, we have Y delta, 4 wire with 3 PDs, 3 CDs. This diagram shows the 3 phase, 4 wire Y delta with PDs, 3 element system. In this case also, when using this wiring, select 3 LY from the shark meter's front panel display. Another one is 2.5 element Y, 4 wire with 2 PDs, 3 CDs. This wiring diagram shows 3 phase, 4 wire system Y with PDs, and 2.5 element. When using this wiring, select 2.5 LY from the shark meter's front panel display. The next one is Delta, 3 wire with no PDs, 2 CDs. This diagram shows 3 phase, 3 wire delta connection with direct voltage. When using this wiring, select 2 CD del from the shark meter's front panel display. Now, we have Delta, 3 wire with 2 PDs, 2 CDs. In this diagram, you will see the 3 phase, 3 wire delta system with 2 potential and 2 current transformers. When using this wiring, select 2 CD del from the shark meter's front panel display. Next, we move to Delta, 3 wire with 2 PDs and 3 CDs. This diagram shows 3 phase, 3 wire delta system with 2 potential and 3 current transformers. When using this wiring, select 2 CD del from the shark meter's front panel display. Note that the third CD4 hookup is optional and is used only for current measurement. The next diagram is for the current only measurement, 3 phase. When using this wiring, select 3 LY from the shark meter's front panel display. Note that, even if the meter is used only for current measurement, NAN reference is recommended for improved accuracy. Similarly, another diagram shows the wiring for current only measurement, dual phase. In addition, the third diagram also shows the wiring of Shark 250 meter for current only measurement, single phase. Now, the last section to cover in this video is the extended surge protection for substation instrumentation. EIG offers a surge protector for applications with harsh electrical conditions. The surge protector is EIMS Beat N400 and it can be ordered from EIG's web store. The IMS Beat N400 surge protector is designed to protect sensitive equipment from the damaging effects of lightning strikes and or industrial switching surges in single phase AC networks up to 320 VACLN slash LG and DC networks up to 400 volts DC. The protectors are ideal for metering systems, RDUs, PLCs and protective relays.
they are used specifically to extend the life and increase reliability of critical control apparatus. For best protection, it is recommended to use two protectors. These will protect the instrument on the line inputs and on the reference input to ground. The protectors have LED indication to enunciate when the protection has worn out. The IMS Beat N400 is connected by wires in parallel with the network to be protected. It can be easily mounted on a wall or plate with self-adhesive tape. The image here shows the wiring schematic for extended surge suppression suitable for substation instrumentation. So, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you understood the installation process of Shark 250 meter completely. See you soon with another informative module. Until then, keep learning, and thanks for watching this video.